بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so before we go ahead with the implementation of the quality of service we'll try to understand what are the reasons for network congestion so network congestion as i said uh, the simple the congestion occurs when you are trying to send two mbps of traffic whereas your link the interface actually supports less than that like let's say it supports only 1.5 mbps now this will lead to the congestion and this will lead to the packets being dropped and this this all actually happens that's what exactly congestion so one of the main reason for the network congestion is because of the lack of bandwidth because normally what happens is you do have you are not having enough bandwidth but whereas you are receiving excess traffic than what your bandwidth has just like i said the example you are your link speed is 1.5 but whereas you are receiving 3 mbps of traffic now this will lead to the congestion now one of the common reason is like uh, when the traffic is moving from lan to wan because typically your lan interfaces or high speed links because they use ethernet links like 100 mbps or gig interfaces but whereas when the traffic goes from lan to wan it will be uh, depending upon what you get from the service provider like 2 mbps or 3 mbps something like that or maybe you are trying to send the traffic within the lan maybe you are sending the traffic from 1 gig interface to 100 mbps and if you are receiving any excess traffic than what the link supports that can lead to the congestion another reason for congestion again uh, the aggregation of the links you receive a traffic from multiple interfaces and then from multiple interfaces you are trying to send over one interface which is like the common interface uh, probably or maybe your head office receiving the traffic from multiple branch offices and trying to route over the uh, over to the next branch office that can also lead to the congestion so these are some of the reasons for congestion one of the main reason is you don't have enough bandwidth and obviously to overcome this solution there are two possible ways either you can just go ahead and increase the bandwidth uh, which is something not always possible the other option is we can we can say let's say we can just go ahead and implement some kind of quality of service where we can give some priority for some some traffic and we can say that if there is a vip traffic or any telepresence or video conferencing application traffic that should be prioritized and if it is an ftp traffic that should not that can be restricted i can restrict that not to use more than 256 kbps something like that we can do that so these are some of the things we can do to overcome this uh, issue that's what we are going to do in our quality of service now the next option there is something called latency uh, we call it as a delay or uh, and there is a variation in the delay we call it as a jitter so uh, generally what is exactly latency here is now latency is about the time taken by the packet to reach from source to destination across the network so we are sending a packet from source so as it reaches the destination the overall time it is going to take to reach from source to destination we generally call this as a end to end delay or end to end latency or in other words we call it as a network delay so uh, generally in in terms of uh, rough calculations we can say like the recommended uh, like if you are using any applications normally it should not exceed uh, something like 400 milliseconds that's normal case and if you are using any real time traffic like vivo ip traffic then it should be somewhere around 150 to 200 milliseconds so this uh, latency the end to end delay we can further divide them into uh, multiple options like we have something called propagation delay now this propagation delay is actually a time taken by a packet to travel from source to destination uh, at a speed of a medium so as it goes over the cable uh, generally it is a kind of light speed 
over the medium to reach from source to destination. That's what we call as propagation delay. And again, we have something called serialization delay. Now, this is actually the time taken by the device to place the packets on the link, on the out output link or out, uh, outside link or the leaving interface. Okay, so higher the speed of the link, the lower the delay. So if you have high speed bandwidth, then obviously it will reduce the overall delay. Okay, so similar way we can say like there is something called processing delay. Processing delay depends upon the, the device, what you're using. So how much time this particular device is going to process and forward it out of the interface. Just like you receive a packet and it checks the routing table and check the next hop, check the exit interface, and then forward it. So that's that's kind of processing delay we call it as. And there is one more uh, delay called variation. Now again, uh, this processing delay again totally depends upon the CPU speed and the CPU utilization. Uh, one more thing, there is something called a uh, variation delay variation. We call it as a jitter. Now, now generally the jitter is about the packets arriving in a different delays. Like let's take an example. This is your normal uh, packets and between each and every packet, there is a, a delay. We call this as a fixed delay. So where uh, let's say in between each packet, let's say there is a 50 milliseconds of delay. That's a normal flow of the traffic. But sometimes uh, if your packet is arriving with a different delays, like let's say here, the delay is 50, 50 milliseconds or, and then here it is 100 and later on it is 70, something like that. If there is a variable uh, packets, receive, uh, when you're receiving the packets in a variable size delays, okay, so that's, that's what we call as jitter. Jitter is generally caused because of the congestion in the network. So when you have the congestion, you generally see there will be a variation in the delay and that variation in the delay, we, have, we call it as jitter. So probably to fix all these things, generally to fix these things, we use some kind of quality of service mechanisms. Like we have a, we have, we'll be seeing something called queuing mechanisms where we are going to match the packets and give some priority for that particular uh, packet. So the, the congestion is, can be because of the lack of bandwidth or sometimes it can be due to some kind of delays, the different types of delays. And this will automatically lead to something called packet loss. Now packet loss is again uh, where the packets are being dropped. Uh, this is again common because this all leads to the packet loss. And the same thing, like if you, if you are sending a two Mbps of traffic where the link speed is just 1.5 Mbps and the router will try to, uh, try to store these packets in a queue before it actually starts dropping. So by default, it will do the tail drop. Tail drop means the last packets will be automatically dropped. Now, what is the impact? The impact, the impact, like I said, some examples, if you're on a telephone call or VYP call, you can see the voice breaks up. Or sometimes if you're using some teleconferencing applications, your picture will be jerky or sometimes the voice and the video doesn't sync. And sometimes if you're downloading some files, you, you see the files when you open up, it gets corrupted because some part of the files are not being downloaded. So these are some of the possible uh, problems you will face if there is a congestion.